Good morning everybody, this is Stephen Housen and this is my youth review. Got a little bit of a sore throat today, so bear with me. Um, let's start last week then. So, well, actually Monday, United beat Arsenal 1-0 at Lee Sports Village uh, in a pretty good, solid performance. 1-0 doesn't really do us justice. We was better than 1-0. We made chances and uh, we was carving Arsenal open at will. Arsenal put 10 men behind the ball, made it difficult for us and we found our space. We, we scored from a set piece, Rochelle Williams with a rare goal from a corner, back post header. Hit it on target, so you can do it, goes in, happy days. Nothing really to write home about. I think some of Arsenal's better players were saved for their League Cup match. Um, whether or not they made the, the team or not, I think they was part of that squad. So Arsenal are struggling this season regardless. Um, and I think this game epitomised what we're likely to see from Manchester United in terms that we're hard to beat, hard to break down because we've got a very good defence and like you know 27 defenders on a pitch. But we don't have those players that can really unlock a key you've got Josh Harrop who can but then he's surrounded or playing with three defenders and a midfielder in the attacking lineup, and it's just not going to happen I don't I don't care who you are you can't think you can beat Premier League Academy opposition with that sort of uh, team why we've not brought specialists in I really don't know um, so it was, it was a good game Monday enjoyable pissing freezing um, I think that's it now temperatures have dropped permanently and it's going to be a big coat time at least Sports Village um, the under 18s which was actually an under 17 side beat MSK Zena Zelina uh, 4-1 in a real good performance on Wednesday uh, it was streamed on, on the internet on YouTube so if you wanted to watch it I think you can still check it out as well if I remember I'll put in a link below to that um Sprat, Damani Mella, Chong and Laird got the goals. It was actually pretty much an under-17 side, as I said. Some pretty decent performances from the lads. Very young under-18 side, and I think with what they did in Slovakia, they was going there doing two a days. Uh, they had one match out there, which was that one which they won. I think what they're doing is they they know what they've got in terms of the players that are about to step into the 23 side next year. Let's just have a bit of a look towards next year. And the likes of um, Damani Mella, um, Dylan Levitt and Dion McGee stepped in and played that game <clears throat> and played very well in that game. That's an eye to what's going to happen in the future for Manchester United's under-18s. And I like that thinking. So Kieran McKenna and the boys, big well done. Another positive result for you guys. Um, Warren Joyce. So then Warren Joyce, Warren Joyce talk emerged last week or a week or so ago that he was in the, the running for the Hull job. Now we have to take that one very seriously because Hull really, really think highly of Warren Joyce as we do here at Manchester United. So that seemed like a tempting proposition, especially amidst what appears on the surface at least to be a forgotten team that he's in charge of. Warren doesn't look frustrated, he just seems his normal self so... On the surface of things, it doesn't look like there's anything wrong, but you have to think that he would have asked for reinforcements, that he would have asked for a better chance at doing something in this league. As a as an actual born winner, Warren Joyce would have had the conversation with the powers that be, be that Woodward, be that Nicky Butt, be that whoever. Why can't we just sign a couple of 18, 19 year olds for this team so I can play these players where they're supposed to be played and have a real good run at it. Winning is a habit at Manchester United and you have to maintain that winning habit. Otherwise, what is the point? You have to, as It's about development, yes. First and foremost about development. And if we developed international English players that was all of the same level as the class of 92 and we won fuck all in the academy sides, no one's going to bat an eyelid. But it's never as black and white as that, is it? So you want to be able to create that winning mentality and that winning ethos and that winning habit also while developing players. And I think you've you've handicapped Warren Joyce this year or Warren Joyce has been handicapped by the club this year by the fact that they've let his better players go. That probably would have been in his squad. And it's right. I think it's. I completely agree with the Pereira and uh, Wilson and Yanazai all going out on loan. But if you put them three into this side, I don't sure this side loses a game. And then you've just not even allowed him, anyone, to replace him. And you're left with utter chaos, aren't you? And you're playing seven and eight defenders and three midfielders and and that's it. That's your team. Um, there was talk emerged of the... It was in the mix-up of the Villa job. 
there was talk emerged recently that he was in the mixer for the Wigan job and this one seems to be taken a little bit more seriously there was no development on, development on it yesterday he was at the Spurs game he, he coached with the same sort of vigour you would expect he laughed off the suggestions when someone asked him is he going to be going to Wigan there seems to be conflicting reports in the newspapers and for one I'm worried because if I'm Warren Joyce I think I've probably got a job for life at Manchester United but is that enough to satisfy him? Is Does he have loftier ambitions for himself? Is he feeling hamstrung by the club's lack of ability to be able to bring somebody or some people in to this under-23 team? Is he feeling unloved by the club because of all of that? And is the proposition of going coaching your own first team too great? Wigan, that's a decently run club. That's a club which means he wouldn't have to move house. It's a club which means... In fact, let's look at it from the Wigan point of view. If you're Wigan and you go, we've got jack shit money. Who can we get in that's going to be happy not dealing with a transfer budget? Who's going to be happy working with what he's got? And who do we know that has got connection with some of the most talented youngsters in English football that would likely all come and die for him if he asked them to play for him? And that's Warren Joyce. Warren Joyce has got all of those things and more. He really builds a team out of a collective of individuals. He demands hard work or go fuck yourself. And I think if you're in the championship, that's the sort of character traits that you need. And if you've not got a transfer budget, Warren Joyce has never had to deal with a transfer budget as the reserves, under-21s, under-23s manager. He, go, he gets told, that's your squad. Make of it what you can. And he goes, sound. How does a league title sound? Sounds pretty good to me. So if you're Wigan, I like... We're going to thinking outside the box there, and they're going, we're probably going to have to pay a fortune for one of these has-been dickhead managers. Or, we can think a little bit outside the box, we can look at who's been successful in a certain set of circumstances, and Warren Joyce is a standout candidate for them. And I'm sure that they've got people that have worked with Warren, or worked for Warren, or at least know of Warren, because they have plenty of United players filtering through Wigan, uh, either on loan or ended up in their first team. Uh, the likes of Reese James, etc. So, I really, I'm really worried that this is something that could happen. And people go, it's just a reserve manager. We got a fucking new reserve manager. If that's your attitude to this, then you're massively underestimating the task that Warren Joyce does, and he does excellently. What Warren Joyce does is he takes these players which are very raw in lots of lots of ways. And he, he makes them into hard-working team players that are ready for first-team football. Some of the performances that you've seen out of players that broke into the team last year, Rashford aside, because he didn't really work a great deal with Warren, although I don't know if he's doing anything with them on the training ground. I don't know if the 18s and the 23s come together for aspects of training and then they go their separate ways for the clubs. I don't know how that works. I don't know, a lot of the 23 squad do end up training with the first team, so I don't know if then Joyce pulls in half a dozen through from the under-18s, so he's got a full squad to train with, and I don't know if that has a knock-on effect all the way through different age groups. I don't know how that works. But it'd be interesting to see. I'm worried, because I think this would be a big, big blow loss for Manchester United. It depends on what his relationship is like with Nicky Butt, it depends on what his relationship's like with Ed Woodward. Can they convince him to stay? I hope so, because I think the prospects of managing Wigan, from his point of view and from the Wigan point of view, might be too great. Um, so, <clears throat> the 23s under 23s yesterday we went to Spurs, uh, left our house at half five, got back about nine o'clock, um, and saw a one-all draw in the middle. Um, the game really fizzled out into just nothing. Spurs weren't a great threat in the second half, that was a really average Spurs side. United, we made a couple of substitutions looking for it. We brought Tyrrell Warren on, who's a centre half or a right back. We brought him on at the right wing, trying to chase it again. This is the sort of thing that we've been forced to do. Uh, El Fatori played in like the number 10 role. And he came to us as you know, maybe a, a right mid, right wing back, right full back. And he's now playing number 10. Um, the one good thing I could say about yesterday is you all know about Tuan Zebe. <laughs> Actually. <laughs> There was, there was several times during the game where I'd said, I slagged him last week a little bit because I said, if I've got to pick a weakness on two on Zabi, it's in the air. And he won everything in the air yesterday, so I'll just shut my fucking mouth. How's that sound? Uh, but what it was good to see yesterday was the 
the emergence of Sean Goss again in a United shirt. Injuries have plagued this guy's career since the start of last season. And I wrote about him, I think it was four years ago. And um, I wrote about him because there was a video emerged that says Skulls 2.0, or Carrick 2.0. And I changed the title of that to Skulls 2.0 because I think he's got a lot more of an aerial threat in terms of the way he plays the balls. Carrick's very on the floor with his pop, with his balls. And I changed it because I think he's also got goals in him a lot more than Michael Carrick. The ball that he played yesterday for Joe Riley, Joe Riley had a, a phenomenal game as well. Joe Riley is just... Joe Riley's a new Dennis Irwin. Just 7, 8 out of 10 performances every single week he's... He's begging for a championship team to come snap him up in January, either on a permanent deal or on loan, because he's ready for it, and he's being wasted in the 23s. But the ball from Sean Goss that Riley uh, hit the run on, got him behind the defence, dummy the keeper, and then calmly finished. It was, a, it was a brilliant goal, and that's why we go to football, to see that sort of thing. The angle that I was at watching the ball, the ball came right towards me and landed just past me um, for when Riley took it on. We've missed Sean Goss's ability in that. And I think when you look at this side, if you look at the under-21 side Manchester United could put out, you go, fuck me, the future is not bad at all for Manchester United. You could play the likes of... You could play Riley at right-back, you could play Balfour Jackson left-back, you could play Tuan Zabi and Roshan at centre-half. That's a phenomenal back four. Phenomenal back four. I think Luke Shaw just misses out on it. I think he's just too old. In midfield, you can play Sean Goss and you can play Matty Willock if you go for a two. If you go for a three, you could bring Fosu Mensah into that. What a midfield three that is. Where we're lacking in these areas is we don't have that Pereira. We don't have that Yanazai character. I think they're probably too old for that now, but we don't have loads of them. We've got a very good number 10 in Josh Harrop who's got ridiculously good feet. But goal scorers and wingers, that's it. Just those specialists. Nines and 11s. Nines and 11s. We don't have a lot of nines and 11s that are standing out. The 18s might have a couple in Chong and Boonan. And there's a couple of others as well, which look like it. Damani Miller um, is a good winger. Someone that stands people up and beats them and takes them on. There's not enough of those at the moment at Manchester United. And I'd like to see us just go and spend a bit of cash in the summer. For a 20th of what you've just spent on Mino Raiola's agent's fee, you could go and get us a fucking phenomenal 18, 19 year old winger or such centre forward. Um, Jose Marino's pictured yesterday with the under 14s and the under 15 side, um, who are tearing it up at the moment, um, ahead of their friendly with Benfica, which I think is in the week. Um, it might be tomorrow, actually. I need to check on that. But, um, it's good to see that Jose Marino's having an interest, uh, in that sort of player. It might have just been a pure PR thing. But it is good to see that Jose Mourinho is getting about and looking further down the line. Not seen him at any of the 23s or the 18s games just yet. But if we do, I'll give you all a shout. So uh, that will do from me. I'm going to wrap it up now. And uh, we'll get my way over to Old Trafford for the Burnley game. Thank you for watching. Um, probably not going to be back this Thursday because I don't think there's any games between now and then. So unless we've got some more developing news on Warren Joyce and any signings or anything like that, I might skip this week's youth review and go straight to next week. But thank you for watching. Get any of your questions or comments uh, in below. And uh, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And please share it if you're a blogger or anything like that and you want to embed it, please just go ahead and embed it. Um, get as many people to see this youth review as possible. Thank you once again, and I'll see you in a bit. Laters.